Caitlin, take it away. Tell us about the movie. Take it away. Uh, thank you. And again, thank you all for coming out to see this movie. I think by now, it, it's not something anybody would argue about, that the 1970s produced some of America's greatest movies of the 20th century. Um, we, but we all know a certain number of them. We know Taxi Driver. We know Slither. We know Dollars. Um, all kinds of movies. Prime Cut is a movie, I think, that somehow got lost in history. But I think that it is one of the greats of the 1970s. It is utterly bizarre, in some ways utterly offensive. It's an incredible noir movie that takes place in blazing sunlight. But not like LA noir, where there's still darkness indoors, literal physical darkness. Everything in Prime Cut is bright, except everything people do, which is as dark as it could possibly be. It also turns a real noir standard theme on its head which is the idea of the city as being a place of corruption, a place where people come from the country and they get sucked into stuff that they would never have been drawn into if they were someplace else, and the next thing they know, they're, they're in the belly of the beast and they can't quite get out. In Prime Cut, all the wickedness in the world is in Kansas City. And big, a bunch of big gangsters from Chicago who have had a deal with these Kansas City gangsters to take payoffs on things, are getting rolled over by them. Kansas City just ups one day and, and says, you know what, <laughs> I'm paying those old jerks in Chicago. And so the Kansas City mob, a big, bad, scary city mob, keeps sending in their best hitmen to deal with Kansas City. And they either don't come back or they come back somewhat changed from the way they were when they went in, which is why they finally have to call on Lee Marvin because, you know, if Lee Marvin can't do it, then basically the, the only way to fix Kansas City would be to drop a bomb on it. Mm -hmm. And so Lee Marvin goes in with a pack of fairly young um, gang underlings who are pretty much what's left at this point to go and clean up Kansas City. And uh, what he finds there is quite frankly really mind-boggling. It's an amazing cast. Um, Lee Marvin, of course, is the gangster. Uh, Eddie Egan is his boss. This is Eddie Egan, who was the real model for Popeye Doyle in French Connection, which Gene Hackman had just won an Oscar for when he went into Prime Cut. Gene Hackman uh, is Mary Ann, head of the gang down in Kansas City. Sissy Spacek is, uh, this is actually her first feature film, ex unless you count, she had a little tiny cameo, not even a cameo, she was an extra in uh, Andy Warhol's Trash. First feature film, and she is part of the business in Kansas City, and I'll say no more about that because you'll see soon enough. Um, Angel Tompkins plays Clarabelle, who's another part of the, uh, the Kansas City experience. I don't know if anybody here remembers her, but she was one of those actresses who, for a big chunk of the 70s, looked like she was always on the verge of being the new Angie Dickinson, perhaps, and it just, it, she kept going, almost up to it. She got a Golden Globe Award for uh, a film she made with Elliot Gould called I Love My Wife, but it never quite happened for her. But uh, I think she's pretty astonishing in this movie, uh, you know, in a way that you don't expect of actresses who looked like that at that time. It, it's pretty remarkable. Beyond that, I think I'm not going to say anything else because I think a lot of the fun of Prime Cut, if you haven't seen it before, unlike you, because I can see you saw it, um, is just seeing where it goes because, frankly, it goes some pretty astonishing places and then it goes a couple of blocks further. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say about Prime Cut right now, but um, I look forward to talking about it with you after it's over and seeing what you think and, uh, and and how much you want to throw things at me for showing it. Uh, only joking. It is a terrific, terrific movie. The director is Michael Ritchie, by the way, who at the time he made this movie had just come off Downhill Racer and The Candidate with Robert Redford, two really terrific movies. And quite honestly, I think never made a movie as good as the trio <laughs> of Downhill Racer, The Candidate, and Prime Cut. A lot of people like Smile, which was a, a movie about beauty contests. Uh, a lot of people have some affection for the Fletch movies with Chevy Chase. He directed those. 
<laughs> but I don't think he did, ever did anything to compare with those first three movies. And of those three, Prime Cut is the one that's just a jaw dropper. You know, Downhill Racer is a really good movie. The Candidate is a remarkable movie about American politics that was extraordinarily cynical, I think in a very sophisticated way, at a time when there weren't that many movies like that. I mean, now movies like that are a dime a dozen. But at that time, it was relatively unusual and really capitalized on the charisma and appeal of the young Robert Redford, who handpicked Richie for first downhill racer and then the candidate, mostly because he had seen him direct, uh, he'd seen a, a pilot that Richie had directed for um, a series called The Outsiders. We can talk a lot more about that afterwards if you're interested. But uh, Prime Cut was the one that people who had seen those first two movies and thought, wow, you know, this Michael Ritchie, he's a really interesting director. And then they saw Prime Cut and I think said, who just hijacked Michael Ritchie's body <laughs> and made this movie Prime Cut? Because it's really not what we expected from the guy who did those other two movies. And that's all I have to say before you see the movie. Don't want to spoil any of its um, interesting developments for you. So, Prime Cut. <laughs>